I forbid you to go there. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Wanna hear something scary? For these next six stories, we'll travel deep into the darkness where twisted fairy tales take place and mysterious creatures lurk around every corner. So grab a flashlight and leave a breadcrumb trail as we read our first chapter, a Grimm's fairy tale that I'm sure your mother never read to you. Once upon a time, there was a sorcerer who disguised himself as a poor man, went begging from house to house, and captured beautiful girls. No one knew where he took them, for none of them ever returned. One day, he came to the door of a man who had three beautiful daughters. He appeared to be a poor, weak beggar, and he carried a pack basket on his back. He asked for a bit to eat, and when the oldest daughter came out to give him a piece of bread, he touched her, and she was magically transported into his pack basket. Then he hurried away with powerful strides and carried her to his house in the middle of a dark forest. Everything was splendid in the house, and he gave her everything that she wanted. My dear, you will like it here with me. You will have everything that your heart desires. So it went for a few days, and then he said to her, I have to go away and leave you alone for a short time. Here are the house keys. You may go everywhere and look at everything except for the one room that this little key here unlocks. I forbid you to go there. He also gave her an egg. Take good care of this egg. You should carry it with you at all times, for if you should lose it, great misfortune would follow. She took the keys and the egg and promised to take good care of everything. As soon as he had gone, she walked about in the house from top to bottom. The rooms glistened with silver and gold. She had never seen anything more beautiful. Finally, she came to the forbidden door. She wanted to pass it by, but curiosity got the best of her. She examined the key. It looked like any other one. She put it into the lock, twisted it a little, and then the door sprang open. She gasped. A large bloody basin stood in the middle, filled with the cut up parts of dead girls. She was so terrified that she dropped the egg in the basin. She got it out again and wiped off the blood, but it was no use for the blood kept coming back. She wiped and scrubbed, but she could not get rid of the stain. Not long afterward, the man returned from his journey and he immediately asked for the key and the egg. She handed them to him, shaking all the while as she watched him examine the blood-stained egg. You went into that chamber against my will, and now against your will, you shall go into it once again. He threw her down, dragged her by her hair into the chamber, cut off her head on the block, then cut her up into pieces, and her blood flowed out onto the floor. Then he threw her into the basin with the others. Now I will go get the second one. And disguised as a poor man again, he went back to their house. The second sister brought him a piece of bread and as he had done to the first one, he captured her by nearly touching her and he carried her away. And everything went exactly as before. She let herself be led astray by her curiosity, opened the blood chamber and looked inside. When he returned, she paid with her life. Then he went and captured the third sister, but she was clever and sly. After he had given her the keys and the egg, she carefully put the egg aside and then examined the house, finally entering the forbidden chamber. Her two dear sisters were lying there in the basin, miserably murdered and chopped to pieces. In spite of this, she proceeded to gather their parts together, placing them back in order, head, body, arms and legs. Then, when nothing else was missing, the parts began to move. They joined together and the two girls opened their eyes and came back to life. Rejoicing, they kissed and hugged one another. When the man returned home, he immediately demanded the keys and the egg. And when he was unable to detect any trace of blood on them, he said, You have passed the test. You shall be my bride. He now had no more power over her and had to do whatever she demanded. Good, but first, you must take a basket full of gold to my father and mother. In the meanwhile, I shall make preparations for the wedding. Then she ran to her sisters, whom she had hidden in a closet, and said, The moment is here when I can rescue you. The evildoer himself shall carry you home. 
as soon as you have arrived at home, send help. She put them both into a basket and then covered them entirely with gold so that they couldn't be seen. Then she called the sorcerer in and said, now carry this basket away, but you are not to stop and rest at all. Take care for I shall be watching you through my little window. The sorcerer lifted the basket onto his back and walked away with it. However, it pressed down so heavily on him that the sweat ran from his face. He sat down taking a breath, but immediately heard, I can see that you're resting, keep walking. He thought it was his bride calling to him from the window, so he got up again. But moments later, he sat back down, only to hear, I can still see you, do not stop. Every time that he stopped walking, someone called out and he had to walk on until, groaning and out of breath, he brought the basket with the gold and the two girls to their parents' house. At home, the bride was making preparations for the wedding feast, to which she had invited the sorcerer's friends. Then she took a skull with grinning teeth, adorned it with jewelry and with a wreath of flowers, carried it to the attic window, and faced it outwards. When everything was ready, she dipped herself into a barrel of honey, cut open the bed and rolled around in it until she looked like a strange bird and no one would have been able to recognize her. Then she walked outside and directed the wedding guests to the house. Finally, the sorcerer returned. You, where are you coming from? I am coming from Fitcher's house. What is my young bride doing there? She has swept the house from bottom to top and now she is looking out of the attic window. The groom looked up. Seeing the decorated skull, he thought it was his bride and he waved a friendly greeting to her. After he and all his guests had gone into the house, the bride's brothers and relatives arrived. They had been sent to rescue her. After all the guests had entered the house, the sisters and brothers closed up all the windows and doors and set it ablaze. The sorcerer, together with his friends, all burned to death. Damn, fairy tales are pretty savage. Like this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarls and our sister channels Hissy Fit and Slay Tricks. If you or anyone you know have any unique paranormal experiences, send me an email at somethingscary@snarled.com, and I might animate your story. Even if it doesn't fit in with the current theme, it might fit one in the future. And if your story doesn't make it into an episode, tune into my weekly live stream every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I might read it live. If you dare, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Awkward Sapphire. Until next time, sweet dreams.